And that's why I need pride as a black person. So okay. when I walk into an office, I don't want your British pride to diminish mine. And that is what I'm here to talk about, Rafe. You have your no pride, British no too. problem, sir. But if your pride diminishes my pride, if you want to hold on. This woman is outrageous. Perhaps someone should show her where we are on the map. If she hates our history, she can always move elsewhere. Imagine I moved to France or Ghana and said I'm offended and traumatised by the paintings in your government buildings. Therefore, I want them replaced with paintings depicting British history. She's lost the plot. Let's break down her arguments before I play you the full debate. This is Britain and shock horror, British history is on display. If you don't like it, it's not our problem. Yes, it's mostly dead white men on display, but not because of racism, but because by accident of geography, the people who shaped these islands throughout history happened to be white men. You can't change the past. I spoke to a teacher recently who said he now has a lot of students in his class from Somalia, I think it was. And British history doesn't represent them, so we need to change the curriculum. I told him, we don't need to change anything. If they want to learn Somalian history, then I'm sure they'll find teachers back in Somalia to teach it. Or their parents can teach it in their own time. You come to this country, you'll get taught the history of this country in our schools. Same as it is in any other country. It's absolutely outrageous that people come to this country, often against the will of the British people, I might add. Then we are told we must change every area of our society to represent them because our history and culture may offend them. I don't think so. I don't believe in a country like Britain you necessarily need lots of strangers you have never met from centuries past who looked like you to feel connected to Britain, especially when it is a place where you are fully integrated and accepted. If you do, that's a problem for you to figure out. It's not for an entire nation to rewrite thousands of years of history to suit people who arrived yesterday. The idea that minorities and women will be traumatised by working in the Foreign Office building and seeing great paintings of dead white men, like she suggests, is ridiculous. And frankly, again, not our problem. That's our history. The fact they are seeing those pictures every day and in a position to follow in their footsteps, and maybe one day have their picture on the wall, shows us Britain is a very inclusive country, possibly too inclusive in some aspects. Just listen to the insanity spoken by this woman in this debate. Look, a bit of interior decorating isn't going to solve the Foreign Office's woes. Let's get that straight. You know, the, the, the mandarins who wrote this report into the problems of the Foreign Office don't seem to realise that they themselves are the problem. Because for the past quarter of a century, our institutions have been run by people who, who actually loathe Britain, who are embarrassed by our history and any expression or pride or patriotism. We've had essentially a long march through the institutions and it's one that has completely captured all of our institutions and the people who are now in place are a new elite but they are a progressive liberal elite not the sort of elites we think about of old conservatives chaps going to eat it and so forth. The new elites that occupy these buildings bear no resemblance to the generations who built them and, and ran them for years. They're actually cuckoos in the nest. And in the case of the Foreign Office, of course, the rot set in much earlier. I mean, it's always been ashamed of Britain. You may remember there was a famous episode of the BBC comedy, uh, Yes, Prime Minister, in the 1980s, when the Prime Minister, Jim Hacker, says the White House believed that the Foreign Office is full of communists and traitors, to which his private secretary, Bernard Woolley, says, well, not entirely full, Prime Minister. And then you remember, you know, Simon MacDonald last year, the former permanent secretary, said that he and his colleagues were in tears and crying uh, when Britain voted for Brexit. And then, of course, after that, they were completely subservient and defeatist when it came to negotiations with okay. Brussels. And now they're saying that Britain shouldn't project an image of greatness on the world stage. I mean, that says it all. They're embarrassed and ashamed of Britain. And we should actually be at the forefront and celebrating the fact 
that Britain invented the modern world and the fact that okay. there are so many democracies around the world is precisely because of the British Empire. Iman, what would you see wrong with uh, Rafe's argument there? Um, well, I, I actually agree with the first point. So we're, we're, we're doing better, Rafe. We're starting to find ways that we can agree. Not always, but sometimes. Your first point about changing paintings, solving the problems of the Foreign Office, I agree it, it, it won't solve all the problems of the Foreign Office. But it will help with um, inclusivity. It will help with making sure that anyone that comes into that office isn't um, feeling kind of dehumanized because of paintings that remind them of subjugation and murder and rape of the past, right? So it's about that inclusivity. This is why it's, it's really important to change uh, paintings. Will it make a difference overall in terms of the issues that they need to deal with in helping our country? No, but it will help with inclusivity. That's an aside. In terms of you saying that uh, it's run by elitists, well, it is. Most organisations, most departments are. Elitism is centred around superiority in terms of equality, or sorry, qualities and um, skills, right? So I think it's safe to say Eamon's here today because of his skills, right? He would technically, one could argue, he is superior in his field. So every department in life, every institution that we have in Britain is run by elitism. So I actually don't have a problem with that. The reason why I have an issue is because when we decide to be elitist for those that aren't white, we connect those things because it's just the fact elitism is superiority, which connects to British superiority, which connects or is associated with the British Empire and the British Empire with its superiority is connected to the subjugation, exploitation, rape, torture, and murder of many people around the world. So when we talk about elitism, we're kind of talking about two separate issues. We've got a superior set of people with skills and uh, qualities, which is a good thing in order to help us thrive. And then you've also got that elitism, which basically lacks diversity mm. in thought. And the reason why we need diversity in thought um, in regards to the Foreign Office is because they deal with so many different types of communities, so many different types of people, yeah. so many different Wouldn't types of thoughts, right? Spent? No, and look, I, I don't disagree. Nobody should be dehumanised. Nobody should be feeling subjugated when they step into the Foreign Office. But wouldn't you Can prefer the thing? Foreign Office... That's not what you're saying. No, 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 I am. I just wanted, yeah. I'm so glad that you, you, you've um, validated my point. I just wanted to say, imagine walking into GB News right now and you saw like pictures on the wall of like women being like either beaten or... I or pictures uh, of beatings kind of, uh, in the Foreign Office. Yeah. And, and to be, no, no, to no, be no, honest, no, I mean, I'm, there's I'm, plenty I'm of minority issues I can gripe about. Like. Sorry, but can I just finish? I'm just giving you an example of what it would be like to walk into some type of office where you, your gender, your race, your age mm -hmm. is um, demeaned, belittled, mm -hmm. Um, uh, used as a as a means to give pride to others, what you and your people have suffered. You probably all, all feel I was some going type to say of way. I hear that, that point, and, and I, I, I hear that defending. point. Nobody should be subjugated, but wouldn't it be better if the foreign office was spending that money, that energy, that focus on perhaps tackling modern slavery, the issues we've got in China, where there are Uyghurs being persecuted by the Chinese? That would be surely under the foreign office's jurisdiction. Rafe Hadel Manku, don't you think there are better things to be spending their time and energy? John? Absolutely. I don't think Imans has actually ever been to the Foreign Office because, I mean, the, the images no. she's depicting, I just I'm don't much. exist. I mean, the fact oh. is these are, these, are, these are wonderful works of art created by a Jewish Huguenot, a descendant of two uh, suppressed minorities who escaped to Britain for a better life as refugees. Uh, these celebrate actually the history yeah. of Britain, bringing uh, br bringing itself Put them in the into museum. Britain's state. May I please finish Put them in my the point? Thank you so much. And just like, uh, it, just it like, celebrates um, it celebrates Britain actually, you know, bringing the bringing the many of the world's countries up to the level where they joined the League of Nations uh, after after the First World War. And so it's a celebration actually of Britain playing its part in improving the world, creating democracies around the world, and creating a system where actually we can have the sort of diplomacy rather than war okay. that we have at the moment in time. And yeah. what are we saying? Are we saying that ambassadors are too are too fragile to uh, walk past a painting? James Cleverly. You just said that. You said that. May I please finish my that, point? Right? You've had a long time to speak. I'm terribly sorry. Come on. So have you. Um, You've had more time than me, well, sir. You'll both have your say. Don't worry. We'll make sure.
Thank you so much. And yeah. uh, James Cleverly was asked about this because he walked past those paintings with the former president of South Africa. And he said neither of them were bothered by any of this. You know, when the, when the uh, state opening of Parliament happens every year in Parliament, the French ambassador has to sit underneath a painting of Waterloo looking at another painting of Trafalgar. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, <laughs> there are much more important pressing issues around the world. The, the Chinese and the, and the Russians will be laughing at us. Strong, yeah. confident nations okay. don't constantly navel gaze and uh, beat themselves up about their past, that they need to look forward and be champions for what Britain is best there at. There were fireworks behind you there. I'm not sure what that was I'm all sorry. about. Was this because you agreed on a point there? There I were thumbs up and right. then the fire it was like the earth moved. Thank you for realising that. I didn't want to distract anyone from your point, Ralph. You, you made a valid point that I agreed with and I, I put my thumbs up and I saw fireworks and I got really excited. I do like fireworks. I do apologise. You, you make a valid point. I, I don't disagree with you. There are far more important things than paintings, okay. guys. And I think we can all agree with that. However, I will also say that paintings are really important. I, I just want to make two really quick points so I know we're running out of time. It's not about pride uh, or having a problem with your pride. Pride is really important for self-esteem, for every human being, for every community. Pride is so important. And that's why I need pride as a black person. So okay. when I walk into an office, I don't want your British pride to diminish mine. And that is what I'm here to talk about, Rafe. You have your no, pride, no problem, too. sir. But if your pride diminishes my pride, if you want to hold on to statues, paintings, and whatever uh, artifacts you stole during the 50, or, or sorry, the 50 countries in Africa that you colonized, if you want to steal give things, if these are the things that give you your self-esteem, if these are the things that give you your pride, then now we have a problem. Guys, because the now that's beaten us. Um, my pride. And you're thank reminding you. We've been proud to have you both on this morning. Thank you both.